Now is Pastor Mark Burns and Reverend Samuel Rodriguez. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you for what, what's your take? Pastor, kick us off here. What do you believe the religious vote is thinking this election? Where are they? Well, without question, Donald Trump, as he said, uh, he swept it in the primaries, um, and the religious vote, the evangelical vote, is uh, backing Donald Trump. Um, with the uh, bringing on Governor Pence uh, to solidify that evangelical vote, to uh, uh, unify and to get behind um, the, the, the campaign that is going to protect our religious uh, freedoms and to c continue to support uh, conservative movements that we as Christians and evangelicals hold dear. Reverend, so Donald Trump yeah. without question. You, Reverend, you agree with that? Yeah, I do. The vast majority of evangelicals affirm an ethos of life, the sanctity of life. So they're pro-life and religious liberty. And there's great concern about the next Supreme Court justices preserving our religious liberty indeed. So many evangelicals are supporting Donald Trump. There's great angst with evangelicals as it pertains to his rhetoric, of course. So it may be a reluctant or uncomfortable support, but I do believe at the end of the day, the vast majority of Bible-believing Christians or evangelicals will support the candidacy Absolutely. of Donald J. Trump because Hillary Clinton supports Planned Parenthood. Recently, she talked about how even in the ninth month, a child does not have any rights whatsoever. Mm. And there's nothing clear coming out of the Clinton campaign regarding protecting religious liberty. Pastor and Martin, it is just for, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say, I mean, to really for the, uh, for people of faith, it's really a no-brainer to which candidate, um, you know, as the Reverend just said, you know, it, it, you, you may not agree necessarily how he delivers some of his message, but it's quite clear that Donald Trump, um, he believes in, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the faith of, 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 of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all faiths. So yeah. an attack on one faith is an attack on all faiths. He, here's Morgan. Good morning, Pastor. There is a federal rule right now that, that says that churches and other taxes and organizations cannot be involved in electoral politics. And Trump actually mentioned this yesterday and said that he was interested in repealing that rule to give churches their power back. What do you think about his proposal to get rid of the rule and how would that affect all, all churches and, and both parties? Well, uh, it's called the Johnson Amendment. I mean, it is without question uh, one of the greatest single attacks on religious liberties in this country when you would think uh, that over 70 to 75 percent of Americans consider themselves at some form of or other Christian or evangelical. Over 250 million Americans consider themselves to be some form of, uh, of Christian, but yet their leaders are unable to declare from their pulpits uh, who they believe um, is the candidate that is uh, as closest to our religious beliefs as possible. So it is without question a direct attack on our faith. And Donald Trump understands that. He said, you are the largest lobbyist group in America. And if we could get that Johnson Amendment removed, a lot of the, uh, uh, of the issues that we hold dear, like the sanctity of life, like the sanctity of marriage, right. um, a lot of these things would not be able to pass. But but unfortunately, they're passing. Hmm. Harlan? Yeah, Reverend, I, I was curious. Are, are people excited? Are religious, peop are religious people and evangelicals, are they excited to go out and support Donald Trump? Uh, because there's a big difference between, you know, supporting them at home, but being excited enough to get out to the polls on Election Day. Yeah, the, the, the word excitement would be a bit, in my opinion, respectfully, a bit of a hyperbole and a way of a stretch. You know, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. This is not your typical election. <laughs> so, I, yes. really, it, it isn't. So, I mean, you have pastors and leaders saying, look, at the end of the day, if we care about our Christian worldview, if we care about religious liberty, listen, I live in California. Yes. Recently, until yesterday, I had a senator who was proposing punishing Christian schools for not embracing a progressive agenda stemming out of the narrative here in California. So religious liberty is at stake. So I believe pastors are reluctantly saying, we're going to have to choose between these two individuals. They're both very flawed in different aspects and dimensions. What are we going to do? Which one will protect religious liberty? Let me ask you this, because another issue that's really a concern for voters, obviously, is terrorism, especially as more soft targets come under attack, including churches. Churches across the country ramping up security right now, especially after the priest was killed in France. So, Pastor Burns, what do you make of these concerns? What should churchgoers be thinking about this, given that national security is up there in terms of one of their most important issues? 
Well, first of all, you know, obviously we want church scores to not be fearful. Uh, the, the Bible declares that God did not give us the spirit of fear. Um, so obviously don't be fearful, uh, but at the same time be vigilant. Um, I, I understand, and, and, and of course in my church and other church pastors that I know across this country already have some form of security in place. They already have, uh, you know, especially what took place in Charleston, South Carolina, um, in other areas, which I, what is without a doubt a terrorist attack on a American soil when you know nine people were killed in a church. Um, so, but but for the smaller churches or what I call the progressive churches in America, you, you, you obviously want to be vigilant and you want to be wise to, to you know to, to have people in place to make sure you know if you if something that looks odd, you, you want to have some some things in sure. place uh, to make sure that that your parishioners will be safe um, and you can worship your God in freedom and in liberty. Yeah, Jack Otter. Uh, so two things. One, I want to find that the Johnson Amendment is actually in the tax code. So it doesn't say that a preacher from the pulpit can't express their opinion. What it says is yeah. that a church organization cannot give money and, remain, and retain its tax-exempt status. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, moving on to, to Trump, how do you square whether it's the issue about, you know, no Muslims can come into this country, we're going to build a wall, the three marriages. Right. Neither of our candidates bear any resemblance to Mother Teresa, but with Trump <laughs> Especially, I think, you know, it's, it's tough to square that with, you know, what I've read in the Bible. How, how do you guys deal with that? Well, you know, let me just say this in reference to him being married three times. You know, when I see Donald Trump, I see the message of grace. Uh, we were all at one point lost, um, but we're now found. We were all at one point blind, but we now see. The Bible declares that we have all sinned uh, uh, and fallen short under the glory uh, of God. And so the, the point that I'm making is, you know, we can't hold Donald Trump um, because we're not voting for the next pastor of the United States. We're voting for the next president. Yeah, now, that's the a good key point. is, yeah. has, has Donald Trump uh, learned from his past mistakes? And he is clearly an amazing father, and he loves his wife, uh, Melania. And so we need to look mm -hmm. at his family and, and how he's produced an amazing children who truly honor his well, father. Yeah, it's great, great analysis okay. there. Go ahead. A final word here, Reverend. We have two flawed candidates. I mean, we're all flawed, right? If not by the grace of God or by the, from the grace of God. But we have two flawed candidates. At the end of the day, we need to look at which party, which party platform yeah. best protects our Judeo-Christian value system and religious liberty. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I have great issues with Donald Trump with his comments on Muslims, on, on building a wall without building a bridge. Right. Uh, in, internally, so I have issues with Donald Trump, but, but I have is issues with Hillary Clinton. So at the end of the day, let's look at the party platform, yeah. which one protects religious liberty, and that's what Christians should vote for come November. Well, 